Hi, my name is Emily. Welcome to my garden. It's a place where dreams are cultivated. Well, fall is definitely in the air, but we took some footage a couple of weeks ago in a great garden. So today, we're going to show you that as we examine the pumpkin. See you in a minute. I'm here with Don Langevin on his pumpkin paradise. Hi, yeah. Don. Thanks for letting me Emily? come in. Thanks. As you can see, what's going on right now is he's growing these giant pumpkins and we're getting ready to take them to market. You take these to fairs, they get weighed in for their poundage. What's the largest one that you've ever grown? Uh, 1,084 last year. And of course you have to load them with a the tractor. Oh yeah, it used to be a, we, we put them on by hand and once we got the seven or 800 pounds, it's about four or five years ago, yeah. we started using the, uh, the front end loader. Pumpkins. Do you know offhand what the life expectancy of the pumpkin would be after it's carved? After Once it's the carved, air gets to it. Well, a lot of us, you know, we'll, we spray a wilt proof on them, you know, anti desiccants. But uh, once they're cut open, you're going to get less than a month out of them. I've seen them uncarved, uh, you know, kept somewhere where they're not going to freeze, last until the following, following well, spring. That's what they did with the root cellars. Yeah. You know, they kept yeah. things all winter long that way. Yeah. Do you have a secret with your fertilizer? Because I know that that's key, as long as, as well as the water and a good sun not location. Not necessarily. It's a, it's a question of having a. Uh, a balance in your soil mm -hmm. and so you fortunately test. we've learned the balance over the last 20 years for pumpkin. There's major plant nutrients you know of N, P, and K, nitrogen, phosphorus, and, and potassium and most pumpkin growers uh, overwhelm the soil with, with uh, fertilizer so we don't have to worry about whether we're short on fertilizer at all. We uh -huh. always have too much. Yeah. All right. But the question is, once you get your soil test, is to balance it. And the key elements to balance are calcium, mm -hmm. which is a minor element, magnesium, and potassium. So you leave out nitrogen and phosphorus as the major plant nutrients because you're already loaded in here. Okay. Um, and so you're just supplementing, basically. That's right. We're yeah. fully spraying during the seasons. Mm -hmm. We make sure our, you know, our soil tests are good. You send that off to be tested before you begin? Yeah, I send a UMass every, every yeah, fall. They have a great department up there. And then uh, when I get it back, um, I got plenty of time. If I need the pH adjusted, then I put a cover crop on the garden and we're ready to go awesome. for next spring. Terrific. Yeah. Most tape measures are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, twelve, and it has a one there for one right. foot. Okay. But then it starts one, two, three again. Yeah. All right. You don't find any 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 uh, tape measures that go 12, 13, 14, 15, and this one goes all the way up to 192 inches. So this is something basically that you did come up with. This is yeah. the Don Longevin tape measure for measuring pumpkins, and you can yeah. purchase these too. Yeah. And uh, and the other thing is to find if you found a tape measure that went one through the longest one you're going to find that goes continuously is 10 feet, 120 uh -huh. inches, and that pumpkin's 145 now. So I would have to put two tape measures together. Right. So that's why. I, I came up with this. The feature that's really unique about this one is you have guesstimated the poundage per per inch. inch. Yeah. Perfect. <laughs> okay. From here, we're going to start working. All right. Okay. Oh, I need more people. <laughs> Where are they? I'm as good as five little boys, I tell you. Hello, guys. Hi, how are you? Good, how are you? You ready to pick up a pumpkin? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you pumpkin picker. The tractor's got a hook on it, and I'm assuming that's what's going to happen. It's not going in the bucket, it's going on the hook. There's a pallet on the back of Don's truck that's also pushing, and that's where it's going to be dropped, I'd say. This is a big moment on the farm. That's awesome. Well, that's it. The pumpkin's loaded. Yeah. I want you to see what it looks like when it gets on that pallet. Looks like a Cinderella pumpkin, doesn't it? It does. Perfect. I want to thank you so much You're for welcome. allowing me to come down and see this. I love this stuff. Okay. Um, and before we close, you got to look at this. That's his license plate. Thank you once again. Thanks, Emily. Okay. See you in just a little bit. Ha, ha, ha.
I had a great time today, and I want to report very proudly that the pumpkin that we loaded onto that truck came in first place at the Marshfield Fair on August the 20th at the weight of 691 pounds. And I wanted to end this segment to talk to you a little bit about the pumpkin. There are a lot of varieties that you can get out there. Of course, we examined the giant pumpkin today, but this is one of my favorites. It's called Illumina, little ghost pumpkin. There are a few ways that you can use these very special pumpkins. As you can see with this particular one, I took and carved the top just like the pot that the garlic chives came from. What a great table arrangement that would be for your table. And this one is a sugar pumpkin. That's what I most often buy. The sugar pumpkin that I chose to use today, I took a beautiful ornamental grass for the top of the arrangement. Now you can also do some fresh flower arrangements. I have done that in the past. I think that this is lovely. It's quick and they make great little favors if you were to have a party and you'd like to give them to your guest at the end. Don't forget the pumpkin seeds. Dry them out, put them on a cookie sheet with some oil and some salt and roast them for Halloween night. One of the things I used to do with my children, they didn't like to eat on Halloween. They were just already in their costumes and they were just thinking about that candy. But I did remember that they love my stuffing. On Thanksgiving, I had to hide the stuffing or else there wouldn't be enough to put in the bird. So what I decided to do was to stuff a pumpkin on Halloween night. Basically what you do is hollow out a sugar pumpkin glaze the inside of it with some butter and some brown sugar. Then make your favorite stuffing recipe. Put that inside, top it with butter, and roast it. All right, the kids might not even eat the pumpkin, but if you slice it in wedges, they will eat the stuffing. And off they go, little trick-or-treating. And again, with the holidays coming up, the pumpkins will be around for a while, certainly for the harvest. You can use these little pumpkin gourds for vessels to serve cranberry sauce, peas, and don't forget the lighting. I'll see you here next time in Emily's Garden. Happy fall! Mm -hmm.